Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a podcast exclusively designed to create more reproductive health awareness and discuss your fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me on tonight's Egg Whisperer Show. The title of tonight's show is, What If Your AMH Is Wrong? Let me just start off by talking to you about where the inspiration came for this show. If you know a little bit about me, you know that my name is Dr. Amy and I'm a fertility expert in the San Francisco Bay Area. And in 2014, I started something called Egg Freezing Party, where I traveled not just around the Bay Area, but all over the country. And I had people coming from all over the world talking to me about Egg Freezing Party and how I'm building awareness around educating people about how to get their levels checked. So from my first party, I taught all the women there. I said, look, you need to get your levels checked. Talk to your OBGYN. And then they were all telling me, Dr. Amy, I'd go to my OBGYN and they'd say, oh, you really have to be trying for one year before you can get your levels checked. And that was very frustrating for me. So that's why I started eggwhisper.com. And that's a website where you can get your levels checked, talk to me, and we'll look at everything, including your tushy. And we'll talk more about what the tushy includes and what the heck I'm talking about a little bit later in this show. But what I've realized is that people might be putting too much stock into their AMH levels. And oftentimes you can get it checked and get it repeated. You think the first one's right, the second one's wrong, or vice versa. So the question is, what if it's wrong? How would you know? So I think this is a really important show for anyone who is tracking their levels over time. So you can understand what the AMH level means, what it means for you, and what you can do to make it better if anything, and what makes it lower, and how to fully understand it. So first of all, cup and say, go watch some movie and put your eggs in that cup, the same way we can tell a man when we're looking at a sperm count. So basically, this is similar, kind of, sort of. It's the best we have. So it is a gauge for basically how many eggs a woman has left. So what does it stand for? We know it stands for anti-Mullerian hormone. That's what it stands for. But I jokingly say it also stands for always meandering hormone and, depending on your age when you get it checked, always mean hormone. So when I look at levels, I consider them diagnostic tools. They're not something that we can treat. We just use them to give us an idea about what's going on. But it's normal to have a level that's low when you're over 40. And it's also normal to have a level that's really high when you're young. But oftentimes when people get levels that are either high or low, they sometimes internalize those levels. It's almost like those levels are tattooed on their forehead and now those levels define them. And the thing is, your AMH level does not define you. It does not define your fertility. So you'll hear me often say that low does not mean no. And also on the other side of things, high does not mean yes. So what does it tell you? We know that AMH can tell you When you're going to go into menopause, it can tell you, in a way, how many eggs you have left. That's what studies tell us. We know that. I've published some of those studies related to AMH and the prediction of your age at menopause. But can it tell us, again, if you're fertile or not? What does it not tell you? It actually doesn't tell you if you have good eggs. It doesn't tell you if you're fertile. And remember, low does not mean no, and high does not mean yes. And when I mean yes, I mean if you're going to have an easy time for pregnancy or an easy time to get pregnant. And what I don't want women to do is get their levels checked, let's say at 30, and say my level is great, I don't have to worry about a thing, and everything's going to be fine. Because what if your level is wrong? So one snapshot at one point of time in your life may not tell the whole story. There's a lot more to your fertility than just the AMH test. Yep, you heard me earlier in the show, the tushy method. How do you check it? It's actually quite easy to check. It's one tube of blood. It's a blood test. You can pretty much check it any time in the menstrual cycle. However, it may vary during the menstrual cycle in some people. I don't just look at the AMH. If I can, I look at FSH and estradiol levels on cycle day three with your AMH level. But a lot of young women who are getting this level checked, they may be on birth control pills. And we know that birth control pills can suppress your AMH level. So if you're taking birth control pills, let's say for a year, for months, 
and you get your AMH level checked, you might get a level that might be low and cause you unnecessary concern. So what I do sometimes is have a woman stop her birth control pills for two months and then get her level checked. Or I just have it, her check it in that placebo week on the seventh day right before she starts a new pack. And if it's, let's say, a normal level, and again, I use the word normal cautiously because the level that you get is just normal for you. And I don't want you to think there's anything wrong with you if your level is considered low because low does not mean no. I should come up with some sort of song or jingle or something like that or probably just a bumper sticker because I'm really good at coming up with those. So what makes the AMH higher? Well, duh, it's higher in young women. But again, it is not unusual for a woman to have a level, let's say, that's over three if you're 20 years old. And then you Google, you go online and you see that over three means you have PCOS. And the answer is, it doesn't mean that. Just because you have a high level doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It just means that you're a young woman who has a lot of eggs. Alternatively, it can also be low if you have a low number of eggs. So it's higher if you have a lot of follicles. So what kind of condition gives us a lot of follicles? Just like I said, polycystic ovary syndrome or even hypothalamic amenorrhea. Women with both of these, what I call hormonal imbalances, can potentially have high AMH levels. So if you have a high AMH level, don't freak out. Don't think that there's something wrong with you. But if you have, let's say, symptoms of PCOS or symptoms of hypothalamic amenorrhea, there might be some really good reasons to get a full thorough workup. For me, I consider PCOS a lifelong condition. And again, who wants to be called or who wants to be told they have a condition? But it's something that you don't just take seriously around the time of when you want to get pregnant. Because it's a hormonal imbalance, I really believe in close monitoring and management of PCOS so that the symptoms don't get out of control. Because by the time you're ready to have a baby, it might take you a while to get the symptoms under control. For example, the high testosterone, the low vitamin D, those are the kinds of things that I like to fix first before my patients get pregnant so they can have the healthiest pregnancy ever. So what makes the AMH lower? Again, what if your AMH is wrong? So I don't want you to think that somehow you've done something to cause it to be wrong. It could be from medication. Some women take Depo-Lupron, for example, if they have a condition called endometriosis. That can make your AMH lower. Same with birth control pills, a low vitamin D. And as you get older, your AMH goes down. Because remember, it's like an egg count test or a sperm count test. You can't give a guy a blood test to see how many sperm cells he has. And I can't reliably do that for a woman to see how many eggs she has left. Except this AMH test is the best thing we have. And what can make it wrong? What can make it wrong? So I'll tell you some stories. I've had patients, for example, who had a level that was 0.2. And then five years later, their level was 2.5. And they say, Dr. Amy, I knew it. I knew that all the acupuncture I did and all the supplements I've been taking and all the herbs that I've been taking were going to help me grow more eggs. At the end of the day, we just don't grow more eggs. The best predictor of your fertility is three letters, and it's A-G-E, age, not your AMH level. Of course, your AMH is part of it, but your age is the most important thing, especially for women over 40. It's our age that matters. So if, let's say, you're over 40, you had a level two years ago that was 0.2, and you had another level that was 2.5, Chances are there was some sort of handling or lab error. So if you see a level that seems a little bit off, what I tell people is get it rechecked, see someone, do an ultrasound, and then I'll tell you about how you would know if it was wrong in just a second. So birth control pills can suppress it, low vitamin D. You've heard me say that a few times. Just so important to know that even if it's low on birth control pills, you stop the pills, that level should go right up. Okay, same with the low vitamin D. So how often should you get it checked? And the answer is it really depends on your goals. So I think everyone should have it checked by the time they're 25. If, let's say, you have a family member who's gone through early menopause, maybe even earlier, 20, 21. We're advising women to have their first pap smear at 21 years of age. Why not get your AMH done at the same time? And for women who are taking birth control pills continuously or even not continuously, cyclically, I think it's a really important thing to get your AMH level checked at least once a year. Because believe it or not, a lot of people think that when they're having regular menstrual cycles on the birth control pills, they actually think that it has something to do with their fertility. 
but those regular periods are just hormonally induced and the birth control pills could be tricking you or masking infertility or egg-related issues. And the last thing I would want is for someone to start the pill at 16, stop it at 32, find out that they ran out of eggs at that time and regret not doing an AMH test and maybe they would have started their family sooner or done an egg freezing cycle. So not just women on birth control pills should be checking their AMH level, but also people who have an IUD. You get the IUD in, you forget about it, five years later, you go and have your new one changed out. It might not be a bad idea to also get your AMH level checked because depending on the type of IUD, whether it's a copper or a progesterone secreting IUD, you may or may not be having periods. And so it's not as reliable as a sign, meaning your periods, as far as what's going on with your hormones coming from your ovaries. So get your level checked, you'll find out what's going on, and you can take that information and make an actionable plan. And it's not something that you necessarily want to check every month. And the reason is that we don't expect to see big changes. It goes down slowly over time. And remember, it's called always meandering. So it's just going up and down and up and down. And then the trend is to where it goes down to zero and that's where we run out of eggs and it happens to everybody it is normal to have a low level let's say at 40. that's just normal but what's hard is as a society we've shifted everything we've shifted when we get married we've shifted when we try and have kids but since society has shifted you would think that science has changed and we have new tools and new ways to improve a woman's egg count to help her grow more eggs if men ran out of sperm there would be a cure for them and because it's women, there's no me too in the infertility movement. I wish there was because believe me, if there's one thing that I could do, I would cure ovarian aging. And so right now we try different things and you've heard of all sorts of therapies out there. But what I think can help women are supplements. For example, CoQ10. I recommend if you're considering egg freezing in your 20s or you're thinking about delaying childbearing, consider taking CoQ10 from an early age. As soon as you're just thinking, I think I might want to have kids. Taking CoQ10 for a long period of time can potentially decrease the rate of egg loss. It's true. We've seen it in mouse studies. And then more recently, at the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, this week they presented data on how CoQ10 can help with egg quality. So that's something that might help with your egg decline and slowing down that rate. So now, the big clue. How do you know if it's wrong? Ultrasound. So we have a diagnostic tool called an ultrasound. I call it my wand, my magic wand. I wish it was a magic wand, honestly. And I wish sometimes that my ultrasound machine was a karaoke machine because I sit in front of it so often during the day. And it's a very helpful tool for me because I can look at someone's ovaries. And by looking at their ovaries, I can see how many eggs I would potentially get if I were to do an egg retrieval cycle. And I can look at the follicle count and kind of give a pretty good guess as far as what a patient's AMH level would be. So if let's say someone's AMH is 3.5 and they come in and their follicle count is 6, I might say, you know what, there's just something that doesn't seem right. It seems like your AMH level might be wrong given what's going on with you clinically. And then sure enough, I repeat the AMH level and it comes back at 0.6. And so that can happen. So you don't want to just get your level checked and just assume that that's the whole story. Certainly get your level checked, maybe have it repeated, and then get everything checked, not just your hormone levels but also have an ultrasound to look at your uterus, see if you have fibroids, and also take a look at your ovaries and count the follicles so you get a good idea as far as what your follicle count is. Because you're not just an age, you're not just an AMH, your ovaries matter too, and how many follicles you have really gives us a really good picture about your fertility. So don't have a fertility freak out, no one stands at an egg cliff, and this is not a fertility time bomb that you're facing. These things happen slowly over time. And I don't want anyone to call me at 39 saying, I'm almost running out of eggs. I need your help tomorrow. Please get me in. Because nothing happens that quickly. So if you wait, get the information, you have time for that. So talking about the tushy method, if you haven't heard me talk about it, it involves five simple fertility screening tests. Check your fallopian tubes, especially in women who've had, let's say, a history of chlamydia, gonorrhea, some sort of pelvic infection get a pelvic ultrasound. Sometimes women have fibroids and they don't even know it and they're sitting and occupying their entire uterus and then they find out after, let's say, a year of trying. That's really, really frustrating. So if you have heavy periods, if your mom had fibroids, there's so many reasons why 
getting an ultrasound before you start having a family is a good thing to do. And then we have the sperm. And I'm going to be doing a show very soon about whether sperm really matters. And I think the answer to that question, if you know me, and then the H are the hormones. So it's not just the AMH, but we also look at FSH, estradiol, as well as other hormones like TSH, which is your thyroid, prolactin, and a number of other things to prepare people for future pregnancy. And I always talk about trimester zero and doing everything you can to be in the best shape ever for the rest of pregnancy and obviously the rest of your life. Not many people get second chances at life. So we got to do it right the first time. And then the last thing, your genetic profile. And so I have people say, I did 23 and me, I'm totally fine. And that's really not the full picture. So we like to look at genes that you and your partner might share, and that might result in a baby with a disease. So we like to do that pre-pregnancy. And there are reproductive genes and cancer genes that I also check depending on your family history. So there is a very simple way of thinking about fertility screening, and that's this way, which is the Tushy method. So overall, I hope you learned a lot about the AMH level and what it means and how it can be used to help you plan your future pregnancy. I'm not going into the specifics about the exact number because I, everyone is so different. A number, let's say, of 0.6 for someone who's 25, for me means that person has a really good chance of getting pregnant because she's 25. But let's say a number of 0.6 at 43, that's a different story because a 25-year-old has a 95% chance of having viable eggs at that age, and a 43-year-old has a 95% chance of not having viable eggs at that age. But certainly, there are women who are able to achieve a healthy pregnancy over 40, and you wouldn't know until you tried, and your AMH won't say don't try. Your AMH will just give you an idea as far as your chance for pregnancy. Potentially, it'll tell you if you have a higher chance of miscarriage. That's what some studies suggest. And at the end of the day, it won't tell you if you'll be able to get pregnant or not. It'll just give you a good sense as far as the number of eggs you have left and when you might go through menopause. So thank you for joining tonight's show. I can't wait to talk more about fertility and eggs and all the things I can do to just spread my message of positivity about fertility. Be sure to take a look at my website, dramy.org, D-R-A-I-M-E-E dot O-R-G. You can also listen to the show on iTunes on the Egg Whisperer podcast, as well as my Medium account, where you can read all the articles that we post. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you so much for listening and making the Egg Whisperer show a part of your weekly routine. To find show notes and a full transcript for this episode, visit dramy.org and look under the blog tab. While you're there, you can find a link for the Egg Whisperer newsletter, which keeps you in the know about fertility news. You can also find Dr. Amy and The Egg Whisperer Show on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. If you'd like to learn even more, Dr. Amy offers classes at The Egg Whisperer School, eggwhispererschool.com, or you can request a consultation on dramy.org. Thank you so much for tuning in and for sharing The Egg Whisperer Show with others. Keep sparkling and have a great day.